In this video you will learn how to modern fiber for natural dyeing. I will show you different methods that work for both yarn and fabric. Mordanting doesn't have to be overwhelming. I will show you exactly how to do it. Hi, I'm Annika. I'm a natural dyer and I teach people how to dye yarn and fabric at home using natural dyes. Let's get started. This is my second video about the topic of mordanting. If you are asking yourself questions like what is a mordant, what different kinds of mordants can I use or do I always have to use a mordant before the natural dyeing can take place, then you should go and watch the other video first. I'm going to link it for you and then you can come back here and watch this one. In this video I'm going to show you how to mordant fiber. Let's talk about the mordanting process. Generally there are three possibilities of how and when the mordant can be applied during the natural dyeing process. The first method is that the mordant is going to be applied first and then the fiber is dyed in the next step. This is what I usually do. The second possibility is that the mordant is applied directly to the dye bath. So the mordanting step and the natural dyeing step are basically the same. However, the results of this method are usually not as good as the results of the first method. The third possibility is that the fiber is dyed first and that a mordant is applied afterwards. Personally, I would not consider this a mordanting method, but rather a color modification in the end. So as you can imagine, since we apply a mordant to strengthen the bond between the dye particles and the fiber, it does not really make sense to apply the mordant after the natural dyeing has taken place. However, if you use the mordant as kind of a color modifier afterwards, you can still achieve beautiful effects. But like I said, I personally would not consider this a mordanting method per se. The next decision you have to make is what kind of mordant you want to use. This is highly dependent on the kind of fiber you want to dye. Generally, we differentiate between protein fibers like wool and cellulose fibers. Those are plant-based fibers like cotton, linen or hemp, for example. Since protein and cellulose fibers have different structures, they react differently to different mordants and this is why you favor one type of mordant over the other depending on what kind of fiber you want to dye. However, there are certain mordants that can be used for both protein and cellulose fibers. In this table you can see which mordants are suitable for which kind of fibers. For protein fibers like wool, alum is a very common option. And for cellulose fibers like linen, you can use aluminum acetate, for example. There is one mordant, however, that works for both protein and cellulose fibers, and that is aluminum triformate. Aluminum triformate, which is also known as aluminum formate, is a newer type of mordant and therefore not as well known as, say, alum. It has numerous benefits compared to the more traditional mordants and that's why I will show you how to use aluminium triformate first. But if you are interested in learning to mordant with alum, I will show you this method as well. What makes aluminium triformate stand out among the different types of mordants you can use? One of its major benefits, like I already mentioned, is the fact that you can use it to mordant both cellulose fibers or plant fi fibers as well as protein fibers. But there is more. Another advantage of aluminium triformate is the fact that you can use it without applying additional heat, so the mordanting can be done at room temperature. Not only does this mean that you need less energy because you are not applying any additional heat, the process is also a lot easier this way. You simply create the mordant solution, immerse your fiber in it and you're basically done. You do not have to check the temperature, 
You can give it a stir from time to time, but that's just about it. All you have to do now is morden for a certain minimum period of time and then just take the fiber out of the mordanting bath whenever you want to use it. This can be after a couple of hours, a couple of days or even weeks. Let's have a look at the mordanting process step by step now. But first, a word about precautions. You should not use the same utensils and pots that you use for your cooking. Always keep them separate. You should make sure to wear gloves and do your natural dyeing as well as your mordanting in a well ventilated area. Personally, I often use a cooking plate that I put outside on my patio. I'm going to link all of the tools and materials that I use in the description box below for you. When it comes to aluminium triformate, I also recommend that you wear safety goggles, a face mask and, like I said, gloves. Try not to breathe in the powder and, of course, do not ingest it. The first step of the natural dyeing process is prepping the yarn and scouring it afterwards. To do so, you take a skein of yarn and segment it into different sections in order to prevent tangling in the dye pot. Divide the strands of the hank into two parts and use a tie to wrap it around in the shape of an infinity sign, as you can see me doing here. You should add at least four different ties, which will create at least four different sections. The second step you have to do before the mordanting can take place is scouring. Scouring basically means cleaning the fibers beforehand. This will make it possible for the mordant and dye to adhere to the fiber properly. It also creates a more even uptake of the mordant and dye later on. To scour your fiber, place it in a water bath filled with lukewarm water and a little bit of dish soap. Gently push it under the water surface with your hands until it is fully immersed in the water bath. Leave the fiber in the bath for at least a couple of hours or ideally overnight, that's what I usually do. Before taking it out on the next day, gently squeeze out the excess water before placing it in the mordant solution in the next step. So that was the first day. On the second day we are going to calculate the exact amount of mordant we need. When it comes to aluminium triformate, we can either go with the GPL grams per liter or WOF weight of fiber method. You can see an example for the GPL method here. 100 gram aluminium triformate can be used to mordan up to 1.5 kilogram of cellulose fibers like cotton or linen or 3 kilogram of protein fibers like wool. You will need 5 liters of water for 100 gram aluminium triformate. This creates a 2% solution. You can see the second option, the weight of fiber option here. Uh, you calculate the amount of aluminium triformate in this method based on the amount of fiber you want to mordant. The recommended amount is 5 to 10% weight of fiber. So for example, if you want to mordant a 100 gram skein of yarn, that would be 3.5 ounces, you will need 5 to 10 grams of aluminium triformate. In this tutorial, we are going to use the weight of fiber method. In this example, we are going to mordant a 100 gram skein of 100% wool yarn. I'm going to insert a clip now showing you how I do it. To mordant this 100 gram skein of yarn, you measure 5 gram of aluminium triformate. Add the mordant in a pot filled with lukewarm water, which is 122 degree Fahrenheit or 50 degree Celsius maximum, and gently stir it with a spoon. The spoon should be either wooden or stainless steel until the powder is fully dissolved. 
You now take the yarn or fabric that has been scoured out of the water bath and gently wring it out. It should be wet but not dripping. Add the fiber to the pot containing the mordant solution and make sure that it is fully immersed in the mordant bath. You can push the yarn below the water surface carefully with your spoon. Leave the fiber in the pot for at least 8 hours. This time period can be extended without any issues. Whether you leave the fiber in the mordanting bath for 8 hours, 24 hours or even longer is not critical. You simply take it out once you're done and it is ready to use. By the way, if you want to know how to dye a skein of yarn step by step, so from the prepping step all the way up to the drying step when the skein is fully dyed, you can download my free natural dyeing for beginners guide. You can find the link in the description box below. Now let's have a look at how to modern fibers with alum. Remember from the table I showed you before that alum is usually used to modern fibers like wool, so protein fibers. The prepping and scouring steps that I already showed you for aluminium triformate are the same when mordanting with alum. I'm going to insert another clip showing you how to measure the alum. First you take a pot and fill it with some lukewarm tap water. You will need 14 grams of alum per 100 gram skein of yarn. I usually dissolve the alum in a small glass jar with some warm water by stirring it in with a spoon first. Then I pour this solution into the pot and add the wet yarn. Make sure that the alum solution covers the yarn completely. Again, you can push the yarn gently below the water surface with your spoon. The next step is heating the mordant bath. You slowly bring the temperature up until it is simmering and let it simmer like that for an hour. You have to check from time to time and give it a gentle stir in order to make sure that the whole yarn comes into even contact with the mordant bath. Let the pot cool down completely before taking out the yarn. I usually let it sit overnight. Gently wring out the excess liquid and place the yarn in a bucket or washing pan with clear water. Then you can either hang the skin to dry for a later dyeing project or immediately use it for natural dyeing. And that's it. That's everything you need to know in order to mordant a skin of yarn or piece of fabric for natural dyeing. I hope this video was helpful to you. Let me know in the comments if you have any further questions and I'll make sure to answer them. Also be sure to like and subscribe the video. I have lots more videos on different natural dyeing topics coming in the future. Bye guys!